handheld PCs are everywhere right now. Steam Decks, Legion Goes, ROG Allies, all fighting for a spot in your bag. But GPD, the company that's been doing this longer than most, is back with the Win 4 in 2025. On paper, it's their most powerful handheld yet, packing AMD's brand new Ryzen HX370 chip into a device the size of a Switch Lite. But here's the big question. Does all that muscle actually make this the handheld to be, or just an expensive science project? Stick around, because after two months of living with this thing, I've got results in eight categories that give us a tangible score. And yes, we're doing a giveaway. Details are at the end. This little device packs a ton of features, so let's break it down into easy-to-score categories, starting with how this thing feels. The GPD Win 4 keeps the same DNA as the last generation. Compact, slide up screen with a backlight, and it hides a keyboard underneath. At 598 grams, it's heavier than a Switch, but feels very premium. The grips on the back are small, so it's a bit more pocketable, but a tad less comfy for longer gaming sessions. And the keyboard works with quick chats or even emulation tweaks, but it's not for serious typing. And I really do like the slide up tactile keyboard, even if it's uh, just a bit niche. It also has a 6-inch 1080p 60Hz IPS panel. It's sharp and colorful, but doesn't have OLED or VRR, and in 2025, with the other stuff out, that kind of feels a bit dated. Text can get small, and competitors like the Legion Go lineup have better screens. Still, for its size, it holds up fine over the 300 ppi. It's very slick, and sounds great too with those speakers. But what about the battery? The battery here depends on the workload, just like every other handheld. AAA games like Cyberpunk drain it in 2-3 to three hours, while lighter indie games can stretch to around 5. But this little thing sucks power, so you'll want a high wattage USB-C power bank if you want a game away from an outlet for long periods of time. Like the Charge 170 and Retractable 65 package here, the small and retractable nature of this little powerhouse is great. And that really matches the Cyberdeck vibe of the GPD Win 4, links down below. So what else can I plug into this thing? Well, you have plenty of ports. The USB-C is Gen 4, micro SD card slots, 3.5 millimeter jacks, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and an Oculink port for an eGPU. That last one means you can dock this at home with a power supply and a desktop grade GPU attached, uh, but more on that later. It's pretty cool. Can I touch that? Dual sticks, D-pad, ABXY buttons, and triggers. All responsive, but a bit cramped if you have larger hands. The slide-out keyboard I like very much is clever, but you mostly have to stick to the controller layout. It's great for games, just less comfortable than a full-size handheld. But what's going on with those buttons? They look like they're ready to fight. Oh, welcome to Clicky vs. Squishy! In this corner, we have some incredible ABXY buttons that are clicky but not squishy, with the PlayStation layout hiding just beyond. In the other corner, we have a D-pad, clicky as ever, looking like it just walked out out on the PS Vita. Notable mentions for the rest of the device is the keyboard, which is clicky on every key. The triggers that look like they are from the PSP 1000 are very clicky and light up, along with the clicky menu button on the bottom side of the right grip. It's a landslide for the clicky buttons this time, but how is the software? Over to you, regular Davey. Thank you, announcer Davey. Now, how does it work? Well, it runs Windows 11, so everything works. Steam, Epic, Game Pass, and even emulators. You name it. Even dual-booting SteamOS, but on this 6-inch screen, Windows can be a bit fiddly without a mouse or keyboard attached, even though we have a very passable option built right in. Along with this weird little switch on the left side, which makes it go from mouse to controller mode, and SteamOS is just the way to be playing this thing. Big picture mode rocks, and the button on the right side is mapped to launch it if Steam is already open, which is really great. So they've kind of tried to work their way around Windows and make it feel a little bit better. I think they did a good job to try and make Windows as usable as it is on such a small device. So what can it run? And I think this is really their selling point. The Ryzen A9 HX370 with RDNA 3 graphics really deliver huge gains over the last generation. Most AAA titles hit 60 FPS at 1080p, medium to high settings. 
Emulation does run smoothly up through the PS3 and the Switch, and if that's not enough, you can even dock this thing with an eGPU, like this one from A. Ooh, Star. It's quite a dock, supporting an 800 watt built in power supply for beefy graphics cards, which is very loud. I don't know why they used this power supply, but it is very loud. It's a enterprise grade power supply. I was able to pair this with an entry level card like the AMD 9060 XT or the ARC B580, and that had enough power to saturate the entire CPU for a nice docked experience without going crazy over budget. This thing is very powerful, and when paired with a dock, you get a very nice console experience running 4K at around 60 and 1080p to around 120, depending on the game. And speaking of games, what will this thing be playing? Well, it's Windows, so anything a Windows PC can play. Steam, Xbox, emulation, it's all here. You miss Nintendo's exclusives, but for sheer breath, nothing touches it. Now it still just is a desktop PC for better, or for worse. And thinking about the better and worse, what are the pros and cons of this device? Well, the pros I had were the chipset that it has, the slide-out keyboard is awesome and makes this feel like a cyber deck and different than every other handheld. In addition to that, the Oculink eGPU port turns this into a great gaming handheld and an additional console when it's docked. This thing is rolling in ports, so if you want to put a USB-C in the top, bottom, Oculink, or headphones, this thing's got you covered. And the last pro I have is a it's just premium. This thing feels like it's very well built, and you can tell that they're on their fourth iteration. This thing feels great to use, and the only gripe I have, which we'll start with the cons now, is it gets warm very quickly. It's a little bit hot to the touch, and I can tell because they are using a very strong chipset in a very small form factor. Another con of this device is its back buttons. I don't personally like how they have these set up and I just need to turn them off. I keep clicking it and it keeps sending me to try and prompt a screenshot, which is very annoying. In addition to that, the battery drains pretty fast. This is a very small device with a lot of power going through it, so you definitely have to make sure that you have a backup power solution. Another con for me is the fans get noisy and are tough to control. And another con is it's very expensive. Due to what we're packing here, this thing has a premium price tag. And while we're talking about pricing, let's talk about the competition. The Win 4 isn't by itself anymore, and it goes up against the Steam Deck, the ROG Allies, and the Lenovo Legion Go's of the world. The deck still wins on value. The Legion Go S has the screen edge, and I think has better triggers of the bunch. The Ally X balances that performance and a little bit low of a price in this category but none match the GPD-4's raw CPU power in this tiny handheld form, making this thing stand out as a very cool cyber deck that no one else is going to recognize on the street. Before we go, let's look at some accessories for this thing. One essential that I noticed was a PD power bank. The retractable 65 and the Charge 170 battery match fantastic together to make this thing just last way longer. And that's if you're going mobile with this device. If you're going to be docking this thing, you definitely want an eGPU. This will give you console level graphics without having to buy an entire console. You can use your CPU on the go and then back on your device. I recommend this AU Star one even though it's a little bit loud. GPD also has one and I'll have some links down below for some decent ones. So after two months, the GPD Win 4 is clearly the most powerful small PC you can buy right now. In raw performance, it's unmatched. The keyboard adds utility and cyber deck vibes with the eGPU support, it doubles as a tiny hybrid PC. But this isn't for everyone. The battery, the fan, and especially the price will turn people away, even though I think this thing is really cool. If you really want a pocket-sized powerhouse for your entire PC library, I think this one is the one for you. And I would give this around a score of 83 for all of our categories. But if this one isn't the one for you, the Steam Deck OLED or the Lenovo Legion Go S might suit you a bit better. And like I said, we're doing a giveaway. To enter, subscribe, like, and drop a comment with your favorite features or your biggest gripe. Check the community tab for a winner at the end of the month. And thank you for watching. Davey out.